Hello YouTube, this is Ahoy. So, this week's tutorial is how to record AMP sims in a CPU-friendly way. So, the first thing that we need to do is that we will create four monobuses and we connect them to the same input. In my case, analog input one, and then we name them DI bass amp, guitar amp, and lead amp. Okay, and then we go to the mixer view, and here we see our new tracks. So this is the DI, and we will do nothing to it. And here's the bass amp, and let's put the pod farm there. And for the bass tone, I will use the skate park preset without the reverb. And then for the guitar amp, I will just use the red plate dual with the default settings and add a gate in front. And for the lead amp, I will use the same settings, but I will just add a delay at the end. So this is just for demonstration purposes, nothing special here. So, what we will do next is that we will create uh, two channels per track. So we need one bass and two guitar. So we will create six mono tracks. So this is the bass DI, bass amp, guitar one DI, guitar one amp, guitar two DI, guitar two amp. And actually let's make another one for the lead. So lead, DI, lead, lead, amp. Okay, so what we will choose is the DI, and here we choose the bass amp, guitar amp, guitar amp, and lead amp. Okay, so as we hear, the DI is your regular DI track. I have the Maxon OD808 pedal, so without it, it sounds like so your regular DI, and with it, it's okay. So we will record both of them. I have programmed a short drum loop here, and I will record my awesome performance here. So please suffer. And the lead. And then the bass. All right, and that's it. So after some really short mixing period, I added a synth. And now I think it sounds kind of nice. So on the master bus, I have L2 just to, you know, get rid of any peaks. And on the drums, I didn't do anything here. I added just a parallel compressor here. You know, just to bring it in your face. And then on the bass, I added a high shelf boost to get more of that 
peak attack sound. And a limiter to keep the level even. So nothing special there. And for the guitars, I used the Renaissance Axe and the Lil Radiator. So for this is the Renaissance Axe. So it gives you a bit more MIDI kind of sound. And I have a high pass filter on 150 Hz. And I, it seems that I actually forgot it here, so I'll just add it. Okay. And when I turn on that little radiator, this is a really cool plugin. You can get it for free actually. For a limited time from Soundtoys website, I'll give you the download link below. And what it does is that it's a saturator plugin. So it makes it sound really like raw and gritty, which makes it sound uh, way less like it's a digital amp or and more like a real amp that was driven really hard. You know, kind of like if you are overdriving the SM57 kind of tone. Okay, then let's move on. On the lead amp, I use the same thing. It also gives you a bit of a volume boost, so anyway. So, in the end, what I got was this. So, if you see that if I would have added... That was my dog. So, it, as you can see, if I would have added the pot farms there, I would have gotten at least 50% more CPU usage. So this is a very good way to work. Because also if you are sending the files to some other to mix, you just save those files. And then he has the reference. If he doesn't like what he hears, he can just discard it and reamp it. And that's it. So, I hope you found this tutorial interesting. Thank you for watching and make good music.